Welcome to Opening Act for All's Ask an Artist series. My name is Brittany Adebumola, and I am a proud alum of Opening Act's high school theater program in New York City. I went to Clara Barton. Um, I am a recent graduate of Syracuse University, and I can currently be seen on the Netflix original series, Grand Army. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Keith Morris. Um, I'm also a proud alumni of Opening Act. Uh, I'm currently going to City College and I'm really excited to be here today because um, I really love to work with like comedy and I'm really excited to talk to our guests we're gonna be having today. Yes, now before we begin, if you're watching this on Facebook, just take a quick moment and share the broadcast to your feed. And if you're watching on YouTube, have you subscribed yet? All right, go on, we'll wait. We'll wait as long as we need to. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All righty. So today on Opening Act for All's Ask an Artist series, we are thrilled to welcome Guillermo Diaz to our broadcast. Now, Guillermo is a fellow and native New Yorker, and he is a pro prolific actor who has been in everything. Uh, like the Chappelle Show, Weeds, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And in Scandal. So mm -hmm. let us please welcome Guillermo Diaz. Round of applause, round of applause. It's only the three of us. Round of applause. <laughs> Work on balance. Yes, welcome. Yeah. I'd be happy to have you here. I'm happy to be here. How are you guys? Good. I'm doing good. Right how, are you, how, are you? how are you doing? Are you I'm doing good. Today? I'm just noticing my, like, I do all this horror art. We do it every Halloween for oh, you guys do that? money oh. for different charities. And I was just like, oh, damn. I have a big old, like, you know, horror piece behind me. I hope that's okay. <laughs> I think it's totally yeah. fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. It looks really nice though. Uh, yeah, it looks really oh, good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So for those of you who are watching, if you have any questions for Guillermo as we're, you know, going through this, I don't even want to call it an interview. We'll call it a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, just feel free to leave your questions in the comments and we'll definitely get to some of your questions uh, during the inter the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. All right. So um, when did you start acting? Right. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I was in, in high school. I was a sophomore in high school. I went to high school in the Bronx, a school called St. Nicholas of Tolentine. Um, mm -hmm. And I was in my sophomore year and, and a couple of my friends came up to me. There was it was a, we were doing a talent show. The school was doing a talent show. I had nothing to do with it. I wasn't a part of it. But my friends came up to me one day and they were like, one of the guys dropped out for this. Uh, they were doing like a Beastie Boys medley of songs and they were going to perform perform that in the talent show. And they were like, yo, one of the guys dropped out. Do you want to do you want to do it? You would be Mike D from the Beastie Boys. And I was like, sure. And um, we yeah. rehearsed and did it. And it was the first time ever I was on stage. And I was like, oh, my God, this is what I want to do. So I was I was in I was about 17 when I first, uh, I guess, started, you know, performing. Uh, and then. And then after that, you know, in New York City, this was like, you know, the 80s. So they had backstage when it was still the newspaper. I don't know if you guys remember that. You guys are probably way too young for that, but. <laughs> the newspaper? <laughs> but so then I started buying backstage and, you know, uh, submitting to all these student films and indie films and background work and just everything. And I just, I just threw myself into it and was like, I just want to act. So I just did every everything I could, you know. Mm, that's that's really cool. I, I love that. Uh, you had like friends that supported you in your like acting career. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody was pretty uh pretty supportive. I also I also uh, you know I, I did like I said I did a ton of background work in student films and then I found an ad for a theater company called it was called mm. In Our Lab at the time and now it's it's Labyrinth. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's a Philip Seymour mm -hmm. Hoffman was a part of it, and John Ortiz and David Zayas, Daphne Rubin Vega, all these amazing people. But um, I, I I got into that theater company, and those became kind of like my my you know my sort of uh, theater and and acting friends and 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 just friends. I mean, they became like family, and and um, I was just lucky to to be able to you know we had a space where we would do plays and then meet every Wednesday and work on, on scenes and, and all sorts of different stuff. So that kind of became my, my whole world. But, um, but yeah, my, my family and friends have always been um, super supportive as well. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 
can't oh can't say the same like 100 <laughs> percent yeah for my family um for my friends they were you know they're always just like oh wow you're into acting that's cool but um uh my family like it took them a little while to warm up but you know once they see that you're actually doing stuff that you're actually hustling and you're 100 percent in it then that yeah. tends to sort of change their mind especially if they see money rolling in absolutely <laughs> that's so true, that's so true. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, um, once they see you get that money job they're like oh okay yeah mm -hmm. i love that you um that you you really kind of started from the ground up with doing background work and you know checking backstage because we get a lot of questions from um just young people and students asking like how do i what's my in like how do i even yes. begin to try yeah. to get into this industry and yeah. you know some people are lucky and they get an agent right off the bat but for a lot of people they sort of start like you so i'm really glad that you know to hear that that's how you sort of, you know, got things rolling for yourself. Yeah. And it took, it took forever. It was years. I think it was like seven, eight years before an agent even, you know, assigned me or, or I got hooked up with an agent. But, but I, I think like now I, people come up to me all the time and they're like, I, you know, I'm really good. I want to be an actor. How can I do it? And I'm like, I, I don't ever, I mean, I'm not saying this is <laughs> it's bad that they're asking, but I don't ever remember asking anyone like, yo, how do I do it? I want to be an actor. Like I just, I knew this is what I wanted and I just jumped into it. I found, like I said, I found backstage and I, I just want, I just needed to just keep acting and, and um, that's all that mattered, all the other stuff. Like now I think people just kind of want to be famous and like all that stuff and they don't really think about the work that much. Yeah. Um, you need real passion yeah. for something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it does. It takes a lot of work. And and again, it, like I said, it took a lot of time before an agent saw me in a play. They actually saw me in a play from that theater company. And that's when I first, um, you know, got connected with an agent and they started sending me out. But it was years before that happened. That's amazing. Yeah. So listen, for awesome. anyone who's watching, just keep at it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. If you want it bad enough, yeah. It, 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 you can have whatever you want if you want it bad enough, you know what I mean? But you got to want it bad enough, especially in this industry, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we, we've all had, and I've had so much rejection and, you know, people saying I wasn't good or whatever, all that negative yeah. stuff. But in your heart and in your soul, if you know that th this is what you want, you, what you what you need to do and what you want to do, then it's it, it will happen no matter what, you know? Yeah. But it's hard to stay at it. It's hard to to keep at it. So many people, you know, fall by the wayside and are like, oh, never mind, I give up or whatever. But if you right. stick at it, then it'll happen. And would you say that it was just simply just that passion for acting that kind of kept you motivated and kept you in it for all these years? Or were, were there any other things that sort of helped you stay on track? Yeah, I I, um, I actually, in the midst of all of this, I went to a community college in, in the city called Baruch. Mm -hmm. College. I think J Lo went yeah. there, and, but I only went for two years, and then um, and then I I dropped out because that's when I got an agent. But in college, I I, I kind of wanted to. My parents were like, "Well, you know, we want you to have something to fall back on, like a business degree or something." So I was like, "Fine, I'll do that." But when I was in uh, in Baruch, I just found myself uh, gravitating towards all the theater classes and all the like, you know just everything that had to do with the arts. And and um, and then I had a couple of professors that really took me under their wing and and um, and uh, mentored me and 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 uh, sort of lifted me up. And, and so so those people were really, uh, you know, important in my life. And they they kind of really helped me uh, stay motivated and stay stay focused and stuff. I had a and I think, you know, on the way, I think everyone kind of hopefully finds someone like that, that, that believes in you wholeheartedly more than you believe in yourself sometimes. And, and that keeps you going, you know, it keeps pushing you forward. So I, I did have that with a couple of professors, like I said, in, in the college and that really helped me. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. We definitely yeah. all need, you know, someone like that. I'm opening acts. The opening act community has been that for me. Yes. So, um, so yeah, that's so great. That's so awesome. To yeah. have right to have a place where you guys could could mm -hmm. go and, and focus your stuff on, yeah, that's absolutely. Awesome. And that's another thing that stood out to me when you were talking earlier about joining the um, the labyrinth labyrinth theater company, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just the fact that you were able to find community there. Um, 
mm-hmm. outside of, and I mean, I'm sure, yes, like in artistic mm-hmm. community um, and yeah, just having people to bounce ideas off, but people who are also there to genuinely support you, who you can call on in times exactly. where you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And we all, I just remember us, we all just wanted to create. We all just constantly, we just wanted to create and, and uh, you know, we just, we, we made that happen and we helped each other, like you said. Yeah, so it was, it was great having that, yeah. And, uh, I can definitely say having friends do that for you is really good because I always imagine like being the opposite where they're like, let's go out, do something. And then you're like, I gotta go act. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> and all, they're all upset. And it's like, man, and it makes you uh, second guess, you know, all that stuff. Totally, totally. Yeah, but having people push you into your yeah. passion, that's like, that's perfect. Absolutely. That's like- and it's okay to want to go out and, and have fun and party and all that stuff too. But, you know, I did all of that too, but yeah. I just, my main focus was just coming back to, to acting and performing and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. would you, what, what are the most important qualities that you think, you know, someone needs to make a career in the arts? Hmm. That's a really, really good question. Um, um, I think discipline, discipline, mm-hmm. one, and, uh, uh, passion and motivation, uh, and, uh, uh, willingness to, to learn, uh, you know, cause they're, they're, you know, I, I, I never took acting class really, except that when I was in college, a couple of the courses were like theater courses. I guess that was kind of like a, like an acting class type thing, but, but, um, but just an, an openness to, to learn and, and, uh, and receive and, and uh, always keep yourself kind of, uh, you know, just open to information and things that will, will help you in the craft. And, and, and yeah, so I mean, so, so number one, I think it's discipline and, and, uh, and motivation, because those are the things that regardless of, of everything else, if you have a lot of talent, there's so many talented people out there that don't have the drive or the motivation or the, you know what I mean? That, that willingness to just keep at it. And, and that kind of, you know, that sort of, uh, starts to kind of evaporate away and they, and they, again, they, they, they don't, they don't make it or they don't continue. So you have to have that that drive within yourself is very important. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine like uh, going to the office or not office, like the stage and they're like trying to hire people. They're going to pick the people that really, really put all their effort into it. Like absolutely. if if you put in like, uh, 70% 70% is it going to be like the guy to pick the guy to pick a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, I don't know if you guys saw the chocolate nutcracker with uh, Debbie Allen. It's a new documentary Not yet. this week. Oh, it's so good. I just watched it, but she, she is constantly telling her students that she's like, look, do not show up late, come in warmed up, prepared because they will fire you. This is a, you know, this is just a, a dance company that we're working on. It's still great, but out there in the real world that you have to be 100% prepared and, and wanting it more than anything else. So it, it was such a great um, uh, motivational like piece to watch. It's so great. And she's so, she's so wonderful. She directed a few of the scandal episodes too, Debbie mm-hmm. Allen, which was so awesome. That's awesome. That's, yeah. That is amazing. So we do have an audience question. um, And they asked, do you have any tips for staying motivated and focused? Uh, Hmm. That's a really good question. Uh, I think, I think for me, uh, kind of um, to, to find like a one thing that, that really uh, gets you going. Like for me, I, I, I love Shakespeare. I've never done Shakespeare, but but I loved it and it would make me so happy. So I started buying like all the the plays, you know, I started buying all the plays and reading them and, and, um, and that sort of kept me motivated and it kept, um, it, 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 uh, it was something that I was aspiring to. I was like, eventually I, I want to do this and I want to be in a, in a Shakespeare play. And, and so, so, you know, finding sort of new things that really excite you and that kind of keeps you, keeps you motivated. Yeah, at least it did for me. Find inspiration yeah, wherever find, you can. Exactly. Thank you. You yeah. said it much, much quicker and easier than I did. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm absorbing. So true, so yeah, find motivation, exactly. Yeah. Or inspiration, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh this might be is a personal question for me, but like when I when I heard about you, 
uh, I was told you're pretty, you're pretty funny, you know, because uh, you've been on like stuff like the Chappelle show. And I thought that was really cool. But then I realized you were on Scandal. I was like, Scandal? That's funny. You know, I heard about Scandal. I haven't watched much of it. But then I looked up a scene of you and you were just had this guy. You had a whole, his whole hand. You had your whole hand around his neck. It's like strangling him. I was like, what? What is that? This is not funny. This is so serious. And you, you saying you're shake, you uh, inspired by Shakespeare makes so much sense. It tells me like you have a lot of range, right? Like you want to do everything. You want to act com- like on everything. Yeah, man. That was also another thing with me. Like I did, it didn't matter what the genre was. I just wanted to act. I just happened to, sort of in the beginning of my career, just you know, I got half baked, and then Dave cast me in his in Chappelle show. I just happened to do a lot of comedy stuff, but when I was doing. Mm before that I was doing a ton of drama and and I don't even think about that I know some people are always like hey what do you want to do next like I, I don't even think about that I think about the work and if it's a good script and a good story and then yeah. I, I want to do it so scandal came along and and you know luckily Shonda believed in me and thought I was right for to play this this uh this insane uh <laughs> spy with a heart uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then after that, after Scandal was over, I did like a season of United We Fall, like with Will Sasso and, you know, Jane Curtin, which was a half hour comedy on ABC. And mm-hmm. so it's just, you know, like, I, I just want to do good work. I want to work on good things. Now, do you find it, um, do you find comedy to be more challenging or the serious drama? Oh, yeah. 100% comedy. One hundred percent. It's like a science, man. It's it's, yeah. It's 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 like with the drama, you just kind of go with your heart and with your your instincts and your you know your. It's just a, it comes from the heart. I think the drama and you know mm-hmm. feeling things, feeling it. But the comedy is like a you know, it's like I said, it's a science. It's so it's it's mathematical. Yeah, so it's definitely a lot more difficult for me. Yeah, I think. And which uh, is more fun for you? Which is more fun? You know what? The drama is more fun for me. I prefer the the um, emotionally crippled and you know socially awkward and characters. I, I I prefer that. I prefer the the tragedy and the darkness. Like I that that's more fun for me to to play. What does that say about me? Right? Like I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like you see people cry. <laughs> uh, oh, we got a question from the chat. I think. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Someone's asking, how do you make a character dynamic outside of the script given to you? That's a really good question. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? Um, f- for me, it's all, again, it's all sort of instinctual. Once you, once you start, you get in front of the camera and you start shooting or while you're rehearsing, something kind of happens and you find little things that, that uh, you know, that start to color that character. But I, for me, like I don't really think about it too much. Um, I think about it a little bit before when I'm reading the script, and I think of ideas. But once you get in front of that camera, it's a, it's a whole different, it's a whole different thing. And and you, you discover things, and you start finding things that, and you're like, oh my god, this is this is who this character is, and mm. it's kind of magical. And I think that's the exciting part for me about acting because it's always, you discover new things. So I think just kind of you know. Um, yeah, just 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 starting to do the work and thing things just sort of start to happen. No, uh, yeah. no I'm I'm curious because mm-hmm. I heard um, the some actors do some weird stuff outside <laughs> of the screen. Uh, you know about the Joker, the people that acted for Joker, they did a lot of weird stuff outside of the outside of the acting space to really get in the character. Have you ever done anything like that? You had to had to go to that level, or was it just yeah. like just you acting in your room, just saying the lines over and over, getting that voice ready? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for Scandal, there were so many intense emotional scenes. I remember, you know, you go off to the side and and just sort of stay by yourself and try to stay in that headspace. And mm. but I don't, I've never, I don't ever remember doing anything like really weird or odd like that. I, I do, I remember hearing that about. I think uh, Jared Leto when he was playing the the yeah. Joker or a couple so, of others. Something involving rats. Or something. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think oh, so. Man. I don't remember. I just remember hearing that they just wanted they wanted to be referred to as the as the character's name and they stayed in character the whole time, which I admire. I love that. I 
listen, once they call cut and, and I'm hungry and I walk past crafty, I'm like, Hey, <laughs> you know, you kind of jump out of it for me. I, it's easy for me to kind of jump out of it and then go back in unless it's a super, super intense scene that you're working on. And then again, you try to stay in that headspace. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's really awesome that you guys have to like keep that headspace. I, I couldn't imagine acting like someone else for like more than an hour. Like it's crazy. You guys do it for days on end. It's really impressive. Yeah. Um, it, but I think we had, I think we had another question. Mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, what's, what's your process for getting into those darker characters? Yeah. Like what makes you um, what make those tick? What makes that tick? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, again, it's, it's a, it's mostly, um, it's mostly, I, I try to read the script a lot. So it's kind of embedded in my head, not necessarily memorize the lines, um, uh, f you know, worrying about that too much, of course, uh, 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 until you're ready to shoot in the day before and a couple of days before then, of course, you're you're memorized. But I do like to just read the script over and over. So the story and the the world is in my is in my brain, like really, really well. So I don't have to think about it when I'm kind of acting. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, people talk about the process and stuff when you're doing TV specifically. Like you don't you don't have time. You don't have time. We're we we'd be shooting. I mean, not to go keep going back to scandal, but we'd be shooting an episode, and then on day four of that episode, we'd shoot for eight days an episode. We'd have our table read for the next episode, and it, you're doing an intense episode, and then you're like, oh man, the next episode, I'm like being waterboarded or I have to, my car falls in the water and I like it's, or, or my, you know, someone dies in my family. It's so you don't have time to even yeah. be like, okay, let me like, what am I going to do with this? You know, you just <laughs> have to jump into it. And, but that's a good thing too, because, um, you know, be beautiful things happen when you don't have time to think too much. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, Yeah. I don't. I guess my process is not really having a process, if that hmm. makes sense. I mean, yeah, yeah. I I, I can imagine like, oh oh, sorry, Brittany, you go. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Um, I so I, I can imagine just like trying to become like an actor can be pretty hard. Just like doing all that stuff like first time, like getting a headspace and trying to get that character down. So like for for me, it sounds like you developed that like talent for doing this like. You start out like just doing stuff in school and you worked your way up all, all the way to like acting on serious shows like Scandal and Weeds and stuff. Like, I think that's really inspirational. Like if anyone's watching and okay. you're an expiring actor, don't, don't give up to keep going. Uh, you got, yeah. you got many, you got a bunch of years doing this. Yeah. You yeah. can do it. Yeah. But, um, oh, we got another question. Um, oh wait, Brittany, what did you want to say before yeah. I, I interrupted you? I don't even Sorry. remember. So let's just get to the question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we can, I guess we can move on. Uh, being being from the Bronx, how do you feel your community is being represented on screen today in comparison to when you started? Um, it, it's definitely a uh, we've we've definitely moved um, uh, some steps forward. It's definitely better and uh, more. Uh, um, yeah, it's better. It's better, but it could be much much better. Yeah, um, I you know when I first started acting, every I did Law and Order a bunch of times and a, a few, you know, a bunch of indie films and all this stuff. But I was always, I tended to always be cast as the, you know, the gun dealer, the drug dealer, or the rapist, the bad guy, the thug. Like I did a million of, of that stuff, of those mm. characters. Um, and at the time I was just like, you know what? It just is what it is. This is the, t I, I didn't really think about it too much, but, um, but then eventually, you know, um, I started being cast in in different roles, and it wasn't just all about that. Um, but yeah, I, I I do believe that that uh, for Latinos and uh, and uh, for Latinos specifically because I'm I'm Latino, it, it has gotten mm -hmm. better. But it, again, it could be a lot lot better. Do you know what I mean? Like, I still would love to see um, a, a TV show with a lead. I mean, I, I think there's maybe one or two, I think like one day at a time. If that's not, I think that's still going. It's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. That's a Latino family, but, um, you know, we don't really see it. We don't really see it too, too much. So I'm hoping that, 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 that changes, you know, that definitely will happen. I feel like yeah. people, people are going to cause for call for a change sometime right? like soon. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And we need more, I mean, we need more people of color just yeah. as a whole, but especially, you know, uh, uh, Latinx folks who are mm -hmm. seated at the table. Cause we have so many actors, mm -hmm. but we don't have people in the rooms where, Absolutely. you know, those decisions about what kinds of shows we're going to put on our network and whatnot. And, the yeah. kind of actors we actually want to see, this kind of stories we want to tell. We don't have enough people who look like us to um, talk like us in those rooms. 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I yeah. feel like until those kind of people are in the rooms, we're not going to see the the kind of representation on and off camera that, that we really not just want, but that we need. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're going to have to wrap up shortly. Okay. But um, mm -hmm. the, or second to last question, um, do you have any words of wisdom for our young people who are watching? Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> well, Good luck. <laughs> do something else. <laughs> you know, the career is very difficult if you don't have the uh, 100,000 percent passion for it, then honestly find find something else if you don't find yourself mm. waking up in the middle of the night or the first thing you think about in the morning is is your craft and and loving loving to act then you know then maybe it's it it's not for you but but if it is and you do feel that way and it's 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 a beautiful beautiful journey that is so like completely fulfilling and and wonderful so yeah just say if it's your passion just like we've said a bunch of times just keep at it Middle mm. half. Yes, absolutely. And then I love it. that's great. Uh, and then the last question um, before we wrap it all up is: um, In twenty seconds, can you tell us one thing that's bringing you joy right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! As um, of recent, what, uh, as of recent, oh, yeah. man, You know what? I've been doing a lot of uh, when the pandemic first hit. I was like. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I want to stay creative. So I started finding all these uh, photographers on social media that I love their work, contacted them. And I was like, hey, do you want to do a FaceTime photo shoot with me or a socially distant shoot? It was all through FaceTime or, or Zoom sometimes. And I found all these, uh, again, creative, wonderful photographers. And I did a bunch of uh, FaceTime photo shoots. So that that made me so, so happy and it kept me creative and and, mm -hmm. and excited about, about working and stuff. So. Yeah, that's one thing that's kept me really happy. Oh, that's amazing. I love that you're constantly seeking inspiration. Yeah. Every yeah. You're, you're never idle. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, no problem, man. It was it was great having you here too, man. Thank I love you, I you. love getting this advice as a as someone who's acted before. I'm definitely gonna use this in the future. Good man. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. Good. Good. Yes. Good. Pleasure having you here, and thank you for being so open and honest. Thank yeah. you so much. Yes. All righty, mm -hmm. so for everyone who is watching, uh, don't miss our latest How to Warm Up Like a Real Dancer um, <laughs> on our YouTube channel, and follow Opening Act on Instagram, and subscribe on YouTube, and join us for our next live event, which will be happening next Friday, December 11th, and our guest will be Hampton Fluker. All righty, so thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you Friday. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one.